Hallelujah. Do we have any redeemed folk in here today? Do we have any redeemed in here today? Come on, church. Do we have any redeemed today? Anybody been redeemed today? We ought to have some redeemed, noisy folk in here. The Bible says, let the redeemed, let the redeemed, let the redeemed. Do we have any redeemed in here today? Are you redeemed? Are you redeemed? You want to show some sun? Are you redeemed? Have you been changed? Have you been changed? I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of your deliverance. Don't be ashamed of your redemption. Don't be ashamed of that. Hallelujah. 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 I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to know that you're redeemed. Anybody glad to know that you are redeemed? Anybody glad to know that you are redeemed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. The ransom has been paid. I've been bought back. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout, thank you, Lord. Come on, you can do better. Somebody shout, thank you, Lord. Come on, talk to me. Shout, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I am redeemed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where would I be without the Lord? Where would you be without the Lord today? Where would we be without him? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where would I be? Where would I be without the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Where would I be without him? Hallelujah. 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 It's all right to praise the Lord. It's all right to praise him. It's all right to give him praise. We didn't came here. We didn't come here to look at each other. We came to give God some glory. We came to thank God for him bringing us through all this week. Somebody didn't make it, but we did. Somebody be glad to be here. You might not be, but I'm glad to be here. Anybody else glad to be here? Hallelujah. At the back door, are you glad to be here? In the front, are we glad to be here? Come on in here, church. Come on in here, church. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came here with, but if you give the Lord some praise, if I don't know what you came here with, I don't know what you're holding on to right now, but if you lift up your hands and you give God some praise, you can let that thing go and give it to Jesus. Let it go. Loose up in here. Loose yourself. Loose it up in here. 
He's been too good to us. Yes, he has. He's been that good to me. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Hallelujah. He's been that good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. I'm looking at Brother Johnson. You don't know how many times we don't talk over the phone. How he wanted to make it to the church house, but he was in too much pain. But praise God, he's here. Do you know what that feel like to make it into the church after a long time? Glory, and he's giving God the praise. Why don't we help God? Help him praise God. Help him praise God today. Help him praise him. Help, help him praise him. Help him praise him. Help him praise him. You ain't grateful, but he is help him praise him. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. It's all right. Come on. Don't be afraid to praise him. Hallelujah. Give him some glory in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, don't you feel a little bit better? Don't you feel a little bit better just by giving him some of that praise? Hallelujah. Don't you feel a little bit better? Hallelujah. Yea, God. Yea, God. Hallelujah. 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 Giving honor to the only true and living God, our creator, our provider, our deliverer, our way maker, our battle axe, our will in the middle of the wheel. Whatever we need, our God. Hallelujah to his son, Jesus Christ our Savior, the, the only Redeemer, hallelujah, and to the precious Holy Spirit. I'm thanking God for all of you in here today. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Recognizing all of my Father's children, all the ministers, deacons, all of the um, officers of church, ushers, to the choir, to our musicians, media team, amen. Missionaries of the church, also, definitely all of you, amen. My wife and Mother Parker, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And I'm not stretched out in front, hallelujah. I'm upright, not horizontal. Anybody glad about that today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to, hallelujah, I want you to turn this. We won't be long this morning, I hope. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where would I be without the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to. Hallelujah. Just want you to turn to the first three Gospels. We're going to look at a piece out of each three. Matthew chapter 9, Luke, excuse me, Mark chapter 2, and Luke chapter 5. We're going to work it backwards. We're going to go to Luke first, then Mark, then Matthew. Luke chapter 5, Mark chapter 2, Matthew chapter 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know some folk I've talked to that told me I almost gave up, Pastor. But I made it. Hallelujah. Anybody ever had that testimony? Hallelujah. Almost gave up, but I made it. Hallelujah. Let us, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come today at this fine moment, oh God, that you have made of this day, God, in your house of prayer. God, we honor you, we recognize you, and we thank you for all that you are doing. Sometimes, oh God, we, we, we forget to recognize you in the worst of times and also in the best of times. But God, you are the difference maker in our lives. God, we thank you for this opportunity that you have allowed us to come into this place of worship to worship you. Father God, none of us know what the other one had to go through to get here, but God, but we are here. And sometimes, oh God, we may even feel like, am I, is my praise right? But God, I, I ask you, God, to help us to praise you. You are the perfect God that knows what type of praise you need, and your word says, oh God, that you want the praises of your people. Father God, many of us have come to get a word Father God, you don't need the word because you are the word, but your word says that you inhabit, that you want the praises of your people. God, forgive us for not wanting to come with a praise. Some didn't want to come with a praise because they don't know how to praise. But God, I ask you, O oh God, to stir up in us that gift, O oh God, that gift of the Holy Spirit that you have, that, that Jesus said that he would send when he left us, O oh God. But I praise be to God that he said in this word that you and the Father are one as well as with the Holy Spirit. So when we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, we, we also feel your presence and the spirit of our Heavenly Father. God, we thank you today. Father God, we, we, there is so much going on in this city today. There is so much going on in the land today. Father God, I ask you to be with that family, oh God, that that, that, that just discovered that their loved one, oh, Father God, was, was in the morgue for nine months, and they thought he was missing, oh, God. For in this city, Father God, Father God, I beg you, oh, God, to have mercy on the family, have mercy on this city. Father God, but give the family comfort, but have mercy on this city, oh, God. Father God, sometimes we say that, that justice is blind, but the people aren't blind, oh, God. The government isn't blind, oh God. And sometimes, oh God, some of us, oh God, aren't treated the same in this city, oh God, by city officials. But God, I'm asking you, oh God, God, make, make it better for us, God. In the name of Jesus, make it better for us, oh God. And help us, oh God, to stand up for the rights, even when the wrong is popular, oh Father God. Father God, there are many, oh God, that are going through something and they need somebody to step in with them, oh God. Father God, help us to be bold in you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, when right needs to be seen, help us to be bold in the midst of wrong, oh God. In the name of Jesus, declaring who God is. Help us to be bold today, God. Father God, our foreparents were bold, oh God. Father God, they had to walk. They got chewed on by dogs and sprayed with water holes, but God, we got so many privileges today. Father God, help us to be mindful that you brought them through and you still got us, God. And Father God, I ask you, God, today, 
Help us to praise you. But, oh God, oh God, help us to heed to your word. Father God, forgive us of, for all of our sins. Show us the error of our ways that we would be able to repent and live for you, oh God. Father God, get me right, God. Get me ready to preach your word. Father God, have Daniel for to decrease, but Jesus Christ, increase to your people in word, deep power, and in sight. And in Jesus' name, let the whole church say amen. 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 We're going to start with Levi chapter 5, just, just two verses. L sorry, Luke. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. That's what we're talking about. If, we, if you read it, we're talking about him. Amen. If you don't mind standing, please, everybody. Amen. 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 If we was in court, a judge could sentence you to, to jail. But the word of God can free you. Amen. Luke 5, 27 reads, And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said to him, Follow me. He left all, rose up, and followed him. Over to Mark chapter 2, verses, uh, verse 13, it reads, And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted to him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Now, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 9 at the ninth verse, and it reads, And Jesus passed forth from thence. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Very briefly, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we come to preach to us this morning about satisfied until Jesus showed up. Amen. Satisfied until Jesus showed up. You may take your seats. Amen. I, I, I believe, if, if we want to be honest with ourselves, before we got saved, many of us enjoyed being a sinner. If you didn't enjoy being a sinner, you were doing something wrong. I mean, I mean, we, if we're going to, let's be, oh, come on, y'all. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. We got to, we got to be honest and shame this devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because somebody looking at you don't, don't believe you ever did anything wrong in your life. And sometimes we even portray that, that we are so holy and been holy a long time. But I'm here to remind us that we ain't been holy all our lives. Some of us ain't even holy right now. Can I get a witness today? Hallelujah. But, but, but many of us, in, un, until, until something had to happen, we were satisfied with how we were living this world of sin. And many of us were going to church, hallelujah, and still going to the club, hallelujah, still going to the bar, still going to the after-hour spot, still cheating on your, your loved ones. Oh, get quiet with that one. But we were just satisfied with the life we were living, and then one day something happened. Jesus showed up in your life at an unexpected moment. You wasn't looking for him, but then somehow, some way, you was at the right place at the right time, and it could have been at your house. It could have been at the bar. It could have been on your job. But whatever the place was, it could have been that place that you was used to going to. Amen. And then Jesus showed up, just showed up. We have this here today with Matthew. We have a, a very interesting story. Many times, we, uh, many preachers don't talk about just these, these couple of verses. We go on to Matthew's house and about how he had all of these sinners in his house. But before we can recognize the sinners in his house, we have to look at the sinner as to who he is. Hallelujah. Before we can talk about how, how great of a life he can live, we need to look at how bad of a life he was already living. Hallelujah. And, and when we look at the particular scriptures here, 
and we see all three, two of them say that his name is, Ma is Levi. Luke calls him Levi, hallelujah, and calls him a publican, hallelujah. And then we have Mark says that he, he's Levi, the son of Alphaeus, hallelujah. And, and yet, when I look at these two, and I, and, I, and I look at Matthew, now Levi is his name and Matthew is his name. But Levi, as we will say, would be his government name or his Hebrew name. Amen. Now, in this church where we call St. Paul, many of us in here got a bunch of names. And very rarely do we go by our real name. Amen. I remember one time I went to go visit Deacon Nesmith's brother at the hospital. And I, this was a few years back, and I, I was new here, been the pastor. I went to go see him. I walked in, and I said, hi, I'm your brother Madison's brother, a, a pastor. And he said, Madison? I said, yes, Madison. I'm, I'm, I'm Madison Nesmith, a, a, a pastor. Deacon Madison? He looked at his wife. He said, Mom, am I something wrong with my head? This man said, I got a brother named Madison. And she said, Junior. He went, oh! Oh, Junior, there have been times I have gone to the hospital and folks have given me names of other folks. Yeah, this is such and such. Go to, they're not, yes, I get to the hospital desk and I ask for the person, they looking up and down, asking me questions. Do you know how old they are? Do you know their birthday? Do you know what flow they could be on? Do you know what they could be here for? And then I call the family up. They go, oh, Pastor, that ain't their name. Lord, amen, baby. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But here we, 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 we have these two wanting to talk about him as Levi, as scholars would say, mainly because to put him in a better light. Because his name, Matthew, had a different connotation. It wasn't popular. Levi gave him a history to his family. Levi, when he called him a publican, he didn't call him a tax collector. He called him a publican because that meant he was a person that had some, uh, um, some importance in his life. He had an important role, and, and he really wanted to show him in a different light. Even Mark even says he is the son of our fears. Hallelujah. Which means that he puts him in a different light by his family. Who is our fears? Some of us don't know this. We'll give a little history lesson real quick. Our fears is actually the husband of Mary, Jesus' mama, sister. That's, that's the genealogy. That's her sister's husband, but he's also the father of James and John. Mm. But when we read in the word of God, we always see our fears being the, brother, the father of James. Only um, Mark tells us that he is the son of also Alphaeus that Levi is. And it's very interesting to know that nowhere else in the rest of the Bible is Matthew mentioned as Levi, a couple of areas, but he's, he's mentioned as Matthew in a few places. But I wonder why would they do that? And it could be because they were embarrassed of him. Do we have any family members in here that we embarrassed of? And let me let me turn it around. Has anyone of us in here ever been embarrassed by our family members? Has anyone in here ever made our families embarrassed? Has anyone ever been ashamed to be in be in your company? Come on, talk to me, church. Anybody ever had that? And 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 so, but when we get to Matthew, Matthew, he's talking about himself, but he's speaking of himself. In the third person. Because when he's telling it in his point of view, he's looking at this is my testimony. Hallelujah. Can't nobody talk about you like you can. Can't nobody know where you've been like you know where you've been. And Matthew does not call himself a publican. He doesn't call himself the son of our fears. He said, when Jesus saw me, he saw a man, and he called me by my name, and he said, Matthew. Hallelujah. And he called them out, but it was very interesting, because when we see Jesus, it said that he was walking by, but the scripture also said that Jesus had a crowd, that, that Jesus had a crowd of folk 
that wanted to be in his company. Hallelujah. But also, all three authors agree that, 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 that Matthew, he was sitting at the, at the receipt of custom. He was by the seashore. What does that mean? That's just like what we have today. Any of you ever been on a cruise? I haven't, but you know, one day we're going to go on a cruise. But anyway, anyway, but when you get off of the cruise ship, you have to go through what? Customs. Amen. And, and depending on what you got, you may have to leave it or you may have to pay some taxes because you were going through customs. This was uh, Matthew's responsibility. He had a crowd around him, but folks didn't like him because he was not an honest man when it came to getting tariffs, when it came to getting taxes. It was the history says that any of these individuals, they didn't work for the Jews, they worked for the Romans. I mean they worked for the Gentiles. And and Jewish history tells me that that it was despised for a Jewish individual to have an employer that was a Gentile. Why can't you find a job amongst your own people? Why you got to go outside of the family? Hallelujah. We celebrating Black History Month. How many folk had to leave down south? How many folk left down south? But when you came up here, you didn't work for nobody black. You didn't work for nobody black. And when you was down south and you worked with somebody black, they didn't have much money. I can't get no help on that today. And then when you came up north and you, and you got to a nice place while you was back home, messages was come up, say, I hope you're doing well. But what you didn't know, that folks was talking about you. Folks was talking about, he, she thinks she's doing something. He thinks she's doing something. Because you are doing something. Even though you're not doing what they want you to do, you are doing something. But whatever we do, and God has brought you to a place of prosperity, you ought to do it the right way. Matthew wasn't doing it the right way. Because the, 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 those who worked for the Jews, for the, for the Romans, what they would do, the Romans would charge a fee. They would tell you, they would tell their, their tax collectors, this is what you got to bring us. And what the tax collectors would do, they would use dishonest scales. And they would, put, they would either hold the scale down or lift it up on one side, do whatever they could do to make sure there was something extra in their pocket. Hallelujah. And so when he did that, people knew what he did. They didn't know him as Levi. They knew him as Matthew because Matthew was no good. Matthew was low down. Matthew couldn't be trusted. Matthew was somebody. When God saw him, God saw Matthew. I don't know about you today. Who did God see when he finally saw who you were? Did he see your, your mama's child or did he see the crackhead? Did he see the gambler? Did he see the drinker? Did he see the liar? Did he see who you were? Were you appreciative to the fact that when my God saw me, he saw me? This is the importance of this particular verse is that Matthew wanted us to let, to be, to let us know that when God, when Jesus was passing by, he was just passing by. I was satisfied with what I was doing. I was collecting taxes. People didn't like me. But Jesus had a crowd that was in love with him. But nobody liked me. And I was okay with that. I was living good. I was living well. But then one day Jesus showed up. Ain't that powerful that when Jesus finally shows up, he wasn't expecting Jesus to come by. He got family that won't even own him. His daddy more than likely wouldn't own him. But yet Jesus pays attention to him. It's something powerful when a God who you thought wouldn't even look at you now pays attention to him. And one thing I want you to see is that not only is these, are these just words, but this is power. When I was studying, I was actually studying the power of God. And what God showed me, I, I got here and I got and I kept going right back and saying, Lord, what's so you what's so specific about this? I keep going back, and all Jesus says is follow me. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's, and, he, and I kept looking and said, that's power. 
Follow me. That's power. Look at what he says. How many of us have tried upon different devices and different resources on trying to get loved ones to give their life to Christ? You've tried every which way you know. You've tried inviting them to church. you try tried sending them textbooks. I mean, you try sending them the Bible. Tried giving them to get online on Facebook. You've tried everything. And it seems just like they are not coming to Christ. But then one day somebody comes in into their life and says, you need to accept Jesus. And it be in that moment. Moment. Everything changes in their life. All Jesus said was, follow me. There is power in the follow me. There is power when God can step into your comfortable situation and speak to you. And with the power of follow me, he uproots you from your seat. He changes your lifestyle. He, he makes you rethink about how you're living. He makes you think about the crowd that you're with. And I love how Luke says it. Luke said when he left, he left all behind. This is power that God can speak two words and make you forget about your past. Make you forget about your company. Make you forget about your friends. Make you put down the crack pipe. Make you put down the bottle. Make you give it all up. Why? Because he said, follow me. Follow me. Satisfied. But Jesus showed up. Jesus can do what we can't do. But we got to trust in the power of the word of God. We ain't got to dress it up. What was fancy about follow me? Jesus was just walking by. He was just walking by. He was just walking by. He didn't do anything fancy. He just spoke his word. And he said, follow me. That's power that can, that can, that can shake you. That's so good that it'll make you want to leave everything. Make you want to leave your good job. Make you want to leave your nice house. Your popular friends. Not even caring about your reputation. He was gone. They didn't like him before because he was a tax collector. Now the, now the Pharisees didn't like him either. But when he decided to follow Jesus. When he decided to follow Jesus. Don't you know they really didn't like him? I want to tell somebody today, they may not have liked you in your old life, but this new life you got, you, they, they, you thought you was something back then, but this new life that you got, now that you're following Jesus, now that you have given your life to the Lord, there is something special in your walk. There is something special in your talk. Now that you don't start following Jesus, your life ain't the same. Now that you don't start following Jesus, you don't go to where you used to go. You don't keep the same company. As a matter of fact, when you bring company to your house, it's just so that they can meet Jesus. You will invite the drug addict. You will invite the prostitute. You will put a spread at your table. And you say, I want to introduce you to Jesus. When was the last time that you brought somebody in from your community and said, let me introduce you to Jesus? He disrupt my life. I want him to disrupt yours. Is there anybody in here glad that you met Jesus? Anybody in here glad that you know the man? Do you know the man today? Aren't you glad that you know him? Somebody say yeah. <laughs> Bible tells us. He had just finished doing some great works. He had just finished healing the man that they had tore off the roof of. And his friends lowered him down. And because of their faith, he healed them. Jesus hadn't too long also got off of a boat. What he brought in, Peter, James, and John, when he told them to launch out into the deep, and they became his disciples. Jesus had to put in some work for those who had respectable jobs, who was living the right life. Why does God got to put in the work with folks that think they're doing good, but they're living just as bad? But here this man that nobody could stand, God just said two words, and he gave his life to him. I'm here to tell somebody today, you just be, be bold in, the, in those words. Follow Jesus and see won't things change around. 
follow Jesus. You ain't got to follow me. But follow Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power when you get with Jesus. The same words that I'm speaking, these are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. And when he speaks it, he sends forth his power. When he speaks, he got the anointing. If you got the anointing, you ought to speak like Jesus. If you got the anointing, you ought to speak like Jesus. If you got the anointing, you ought to speak like Jesus. If you got the anointing, you ought to have the confidence to speak like Jesus. You ought to speak. Quit being satisfied with how you're living right now. This ain't nothing. How do I know it ain't nothing? Because the Bible tells us that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word, follow me, will keep, hallelujah, follow me. You may not can tell somebody else, but you ought to look in the mirror and tell yourself, keep following Jesus. When folks can't stand you, say, I'm going to keep following Jesus. When they treat you bad, say, I'm going to keep following Jesus. When they want to take you back to how you used to live, when they want to take you back to how you used to talk, when they want to take you back to how you used to act, you got to look in the mirror. Look at yourself. You've been following Jesus. Keep following Jesus because Jesus is the one that took your sins to the cross. Jesus is the one that died for you. Jesus is the one that went in the grave for you. But Jesus is the one that got up with all power. But Jesus is the one that rose from the grave. But Jesus is the one. He's the one. He's the one. Jesus is the one. It ain't you. It's Jesus. It ain't me. It's Jesus. It said there's power in the name of Jesus. We may not, some of us think, I just got to say in the name of Jesus. You can just say Jesus. You can just say Jesus. Something happens when you say Jesus. Things change when you say Jesus. When you don't know how to pray, say Jesus. When you don't know how to move, just say Jesus. When you're hurt and medicine ain't working, say Jesus. When you don't feel like going to the next level, say Jesus. When you don't want to go to work, say Jesus. When you don't want to come to church, say Jesus. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank him for Jesus. I thank him for his power. The power of follow me shakes up everything. That's power. When two words can be spoken and can disrupt a person's lifestyle. We're worried about when people going to come to church. I want to know when we're going to start worried about when they're coming. And we want to go out there and give them the word. Give them the word. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Jesus. You're satisfied with how you're living. But if you follow Jesus, you'll find out you've been living a lie. But if you follow Jesus... You will find out that he got a new place for you in his father's kingdom. He said, in my father's house, there are what many mansions. Hallelujah. I wouldn't have told you so if it wasn't so. But he said, and I love that song. I say this all the time. How Frank Williams says, and one of them belongs to me. Aren't you glad you know Jesus, church? Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Doors of the church are open. Jesus.